All right, could it, Bitcoin be entering a danger zone right now? A lot of people are looking at the charts. We'll dive into that, give you guys some insights. Also, maybe take a look at where this week may result in whether we see the markets go up or the markets go down. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back into Tech Bath. Before we get started, thank our sponsor, and that is iTrust Capital. If you guys are looking at long-term holding and you want to do it in a crypto IRA, this is one way you can do it. Just go over to their website, itrustcapital.com, and you can park your Bitcoin in there, your Doge in there, your Avalanche in there, all sorts of opportunities in the crypto space, as well as silver and gold. So a lot of uh, things you can go with. It's very easy too. All you have to do is use our code down below. You'll get a $100 funding reward and you decide to go and get into your first crypto IRA. All right, so a couple of things are happening right now. Bitcoin had a rocky weekend. Solana, of course, absolutely exploded. By the way, we have a full Solana video for you coming right after this. So stick around for that. It's going to be a big one. A lot of uh, alpha in that too. So some interesting things in terms of projects, all that. Stay tuned for that. Getting to a couple of points here. Bitcoin entering a pre-having danger zone. This is one of the areas on the charts that people have been a little bit concerned, but there's a lot of people still very bullish. And I would say, you know, make sure and, and hit the uh, poll today. We'll find out where you guys stand. A couple of points here. Two days, uh, in two days, Bitcoin will officially enter the danger zone where historical pre-having retraces have begun. And if you believe in cycles and you understand that, this could be the time in which we could see those kind of scenarios play out. And if you look at it, uh, during the 2016 halving, Bitcoin fell 40% during that time. And in 2020, it fell uh, 20%. So if it cuts in half again, I mean, that's a paltry 10%, hardly a day or even an issue. But it could see maybe a 20 or 25% drop. And that's what a lot of people are looking at going into this halving. Remember, halving is moving kind of back and forth between April 16th and April 20th, but it's going to happen here in a handful of weekends, and we'll start to see it. If you look at the chart right now, let me kind of connect up here and repaint that. I've been having connection issues with uh, with TradingView, but anyway, you can kind of take a look here. Obviously, with Bitcoin retracing off that top, if we just take a look here at where it's come from down to where it's trading right now, you know, a little bit of a 7% down from its top at around 73k. So still not necessarily anything that a lot of people are saying this is a, you know, a panic mode, but I think the timing here is very critical and it also happens in a week where we're starting to see some other macro pressures that could cause a little bit of movement. Now, this in conjunction with ETH trading under 3500, I think is what people have people in a little bit of a uh, um, maybe a watch zone right now of crypto. But at the same time, you've got Avalanche and Solana soaring to what seems to be just unstoppable uh, rises. So I, I don't know. This is a, it's a very interesting time right now in crypto. And if you're new in crypto and you're trying to figure out where to go, what to do, hopefully this is the show for you guys. Make sure and smash the like button right now. Just hit that like button and subscribe. And we're going to do these lives. We're trying to get those out more on a daily basis for you. And with that, It'll give you a notification if you click that little bell and when we go live, and that way you got uh, some of the, the front end stuff that we do. A couple of cycles to look at if you kind of compare the 2016 17 cycle. We had a 40, a 40, a 30, a 30, and a 40 correction. Lightens up a little bit in 2020 uh, to where we had that 10% correction. And then 24 right now, we've had a 21 and a 14. So we could see this here right now, maybe go into double digits if Bitcoin starts to. Uh, clip under the 65k range. That's going to be the the mark that'll be interesting to watch. Now, sentiment has been kind of interesting as well. Our market sentiment index has been looking at Bitcoin separating, and we have two sentiment scores. And typically, when they line up with each other, it usually means markets are you know somewhat consistent and expected. It's going up, sure, no problem. But when we have our amplification sentiment start to move downward and top line sentiment. It usually means that there's some, some issues that, that are getting ready to happen. And that may be the case right now with both Bitcoin and Ethereum. Ethereum, of course, dropping under the $3,500 mark. So definitely a point. Uh, and we've got that pull up. So I'd love to kind of see what you guys are thinking in terms of what's going to come first. Another point right here. Investors have been betting on a soft landing. So far, they've been right. How long will that continue? Yield curve, inversion, still with us. 
at the point where the market has never stayed up longer than it has now, this has, of course, got a lot of people a little bit spooked. I was on another uh, podcast last week, and we were talking about that. It was with a money manager. And um, the concept you know, he was looking at for his clients is, is that they're softening the entry point. So I wonder if that's been causing a little bit of pullback in the uh, Bitcoin ETFs in terms of inflow. So one to watch for sure in terms of just the, the general. But if you take a look at some of the craziness that's been going on and you kind of think, oh yeah, we're so back or these are the kind of shenanigans that happened. This was the original dog with hat. Uh, if you don't, if you've followed our channel, you probably know a little bit about WIF. It's it's one of those meme coins, which are total, you know, crypto casino type projects. But the point being is this thing went for 4.3 million. Now this wasn't even an NFT. This was actually the photo. So what does that tell you? I mean, there's a lot of loose liquidity in the market. And I think a lot of people are looking at this maybe as an up only from here market. I mean, at the same time, you look at what Solana has been able to do, what Avalanche has been able to do. Some people would say, hey, well, these are good bullish indicators. Or it could be liquidity sliding out of the top two tokens and into the three and four tokens, so to speak, when you look at the top 10 at Avalanche and um, Solana. So I think those are the things that a lot of people are kind of looking into. A couple other things, Bitcoin faces potential impact. Again, uh, these are, again, against some of the key events happening this week. Some of those events I'll highlight right here. Uh, decision on interest rate schedule for Wednesday. This is probably going to get a hold, meaning no, no rate, no reduction. And then uh, any indication of a shift in interest on policy from the feds could significantly uh, impact Bitcoin. If we see a rate up or a rate down, or even I think in the case we're at right now, most likely a pause uh, from Chair Powell, that'll be the question. By the way, do you guys like it when we do our live streams of the FOMC and get comments afterwards? Let me know in the comments because we're thinking about maybe not doing that live stream and covering something else. I'd love to get you guys' feedback on it. But there's some key events this week. Housing data, of course, tomorrow, Tuesday. Fed interest on Wednesday, which is the FOMC. Fed press conference on Wednesday also. And then uh, the manufacturing index. A couple of data points on home sales. And then uh, Chair Powell will talk on Friday. I think it's a Fed week. It's one of those things right now where the market, remember that interest, or excuse me, inflation is something that a lot of people look at and say, well, inflation's been kind of just tickling along here a little bit, a little bit, down a point, up a point. You know, we haven't come back to our 2%. Remember that inflation is compound, meaning you're adding to it every time the inflation reports out. This is the inflation upon uh, what it compares to in the previous cycle. So if you look back in, I'll show you a chart in a second, this is a big deal because you're talking really since 2000 about an 80% difference in what you could spend a hundred grand on or 10 grand on or a thousand dollars on 80% more if you're trying to go out and buy in today's markets just with, you know, regular stuff. Here's Eric Balshunas coming in. I bet and FBTC now both in the top five ETFs by year to date flow. This is crazy for them to be in the top five. That's, that's amazing. Uh, this is of all ETFs is what he's talking about here. So that's a pretty, pretty big deal. But he's talking about uh, these new uh, little guys coming in and hanging with the big guys. Pretty important and I think pretty impressive too when you look at this. And I think this has been the factor that I still believe is the uh, catalyst that has caused Bitcoin to do what it's done up to the 73K, which is its new all-time high. Other things he was hitting on right here, and I agree with this as well, as well, we actually talked a lot about this before the ETF got passed, and that is that Europe and Canada Bitcoin ETFs are seeing outflows. And, and this is mostly, I would anticipate, that a lot of that is probably just shifting over into a US ETF, most likely IBIT or the Fidelity ETF. But business as usual for uh, US, I'll show you some charts to compare against that because I don't know if it's as bad as uh, in terms of out or inflows dropping as many people will think. We'll know uh, later today if we're starting to see a comparison week over, but I will show you something very unique about the ETF chart here in a second. Uh, Bitcoin ETFs hot start seems largely driven through retail investors. This is something that did surprise me a little bit. And I've talked to a lot of people that have anticipated that most of these data points uh, from these inflows have been coming from other places. Now, this article's 
presuming that there's probably some advisors in here, but largely speaking, based on the size of the trades, it looks like retail is definitely a big factor. And it was basically looking at the size of the trade itself, not necessarily a family office or an advisor trade. So if that is the case, then that means that maybe traditional capital, in fact, is not moving the number. So is it just people that are saying, okay, I've been looking at Bitcoin, I just want to go this route, uh, which, which is a little bit less maybe in the way of uh, risk, but average accounts, 250,000 trades in a day, average trade size uh, is 326 shares or around 13,000 bucks, suggesting uh, that those trades were made prior by retail. So that's a little bit of a surprise, I think. And we showed a Matt Hogan tweet here last week where he was going out, talking to family offices, high net worth individuals. And his point was, is that when we see these filings coming in here in the next month or so, it's likely that we could see how a lot of the family offices and advisory groups are starting to trade. And if there is, maybe that will tell a little bit deeper into uh, where the real inflows or outflows could be coming from. So remember, GBDC, GBDC still getting outflows. Here's a good example of the spot uh, Bitcoin ETF uh, flows. And I'm looking at, these are the last two weeks here, play, painting out here. And as you can see, last Monday, this was the 11th, total was 533. That's kind of hard to read. Let me see if I can, I don't know if I can zoom in on this one because this is an active, there we go. So last month, or excuse me, last Monday, 533. And then you see right there on Friday, uh, 678. Now IBIT kind of led the way there on Friday. IBIT led the way on Thursday with 848. This will be the week to compare again. So I'm looking for this Monday. If the total comes in softer than that 533 number, all right, maybe there's a little bit of cause for concern. But remember, let's go back here two weeks, 354, go back another week, and you were at 276. So slowly moving. If we're trend line is still up, let's say we go to 580. That's maybe not at the accelerated level, but it's still in growth mode in comparison on week over week. So that's one thing to consider there. The other thing that is kind of interesting, this was IBIT versus uh, FBDC. This is the ETFs, again, on where the investments have gone. So the people who have gone into these investments, I mean, you can kind of see here from the low, right there on January 23rd, to where it's trading now, up 49%, 58% respectively, on both IBIT and FBDC. So people who are in these, they're doing great. They look at it quite a bit differently than a crypto investor, someone that is a true degen or someone that's out there doing spot or if you're doing uh, just, you know, general trades. It's a different kind of mentality when you get into these ETFs. So that in itself, I think also plays into it for sure. But other things to consider, uh, Standard Charter raised the Bitcoin price target to 154 by year end. So many price targets out there right now. I mean, I've seen prices up to half a million. We had Jeff um, from Valshares on, was it Friday? I think it was Friday. I think he picked, was it, what was it, 400 or 450? Yeah, 450. Yeah, and that was by October of next year. I was surprised at that one coming from uh, Jeff even. But when you look at, and he's, you know, he's a fund manager. So they're looking at client reception. They're looking at retail perception. And then they're also looking at how the market uh, potential is in terms of liquidity, which is a really big one as well. This was my tweet uh, this morning. Basically says, hey, you think de-dollarization not happening? Think again, 100K in 2020 cost you 182 in 24. This just shows you the movement here from, uh, look back here, this is 22 right here. You know, you get into 2020 right about that little clip. I'll zoom in on that for you guys a little bit. That's the variation in inflation. So when you think 2%, 3% inflation. That's a compounded number that continues to drive that up, meaning your spending power is continuing to rise or lower, costing you more money for the same thing. So what would cost you in this particular case, I ran the chart on hundred grand, that would maybe be a salary. Someone that's getting hundred grand, they would have to make 182,000 just to be able to live like they did in 2020. So it's a bigger, bigger issue than a lot of people think. So that's why I think Chair Powell is continuing to push so hard at trying to do this. So it brings the question of whether or not we're seeing all this AI hubbub happening with NVIDIA this week, 
will that battle against, because remember, NVIDIA, pretty much the star of the S&P 500 right now, will that battle against the FOMC uh, agenda and what they may talk about possibly as a hawkish position? Listen into this clip. I think you might like it. Yeah, good morning, Contessa. Well, I think there's a lot of nervousness out there. I would say jittery is the word I would use to describe the markets over the last couple of weeks and likely today. We have a lot of big news coming with the Fed uh, tomorrow. And, you know, also on the tech front, you have NVIDIA's big tech conference uh, today and tomorrow. And, and that's been the driver of the market, all of the AI buzz. And what NVIDIA says is going to impact the, the future forecasts uh, for that industry. And what about AI? Do you think that the gains have mostly been priced in at this point and may take a while to, to provide some return on those investments? Yeah, that's uh, going to be the watchword for the week with uh, NVIDIA's event. The question now becomes, where are the applications for AI? This gets down to uh, a lot of things, I think, that will be announced at GDC. Uh, and right here at GDC, the future of rendering real-time ray tracing, holographic displays, and the blockchain. This happens to be one of the blockchain projects out there. You know it as Render, but it's Jules Erbach, who is the CEO over at Otoy. And they're going to be talking about this. So this all plays into maybe the narrative that Charles Schwab was talking about is the opportunity of do we see some extended reach in AI maybe through use cases that could be announced this week over at GTC from NVIDIA. All of that going to be playing out. We'll see. This happens, I think, on the 20th. So here in a couple of days, we'll get a chance to see a lot of these uh, clips, and we'll probably have a few for you guys as well. Last, uh, last tweet here, and then we'll get in some questions. And the poll, checking in on crypto liquidity. Uh, mania is still a long way off. You can kind of see the comparison of crypto liquidity back here in 21, when she, this was the last bull run. And you can kind of see the cycles that kind of went with it. This is where we are right now. Not really much of the same. So very interesting how some of these uh, charts are definitely moving. Let's get into some questions, but let's go over to the poll real quick, see what you guys think. All right, so what happens first, Bitcoin 73 or 63? 63 comes in pretty well compared to Solana hitting its all-time high at 260 or ETH at 47. So everybody's a little bit more bearish in there right now. I'd love to know why. Why are you more bearish? We'll get a couple of questions in here. All right, so Mario says, uh, sold, uh, sold ETH2, sold way bigger returns starting to look like an ETH killer. Uh, remember, Solana has been moving very aggressively. A lot of news coming uh, for Solana. I think that will be very bullish. Be on the lookout for that. We'll cover that. Again, we have a, a Solana video dropping after this, so check it out. HBAR going to make excellent gains this year. I still love that project, um, HBAR. We've had them on the show a couple of times. I still like it, definitely. Uh, feels like institutional to me. Could see that. Maybe this is an opportunity for, again, more entries. I don't see retail creating a new all-time high before having. Uh, no reason to buy ETH over Sol. The charts say a lot. I think a lot of people would look at ETH as maybe a faster run. Remember, ETH has been very sluggish this cycle, or is it still very early? I think that's what a, a lot of people are still looking at. A correction to 63, healthy, needed before a halving. Definitely agree with that. 50s incoming from ADUB. 50 incoming. That would be a big one. I think uh, your, your friend and, and neighbor Gareth would like that for sure. ADA surpassing XRP sometimes. So you think, no, I don't think so. Well, XRP is kind of a little bit on the ropes, but I do hear uh, from that community something's happening next month. So we'll see how that happens. Seoul, uh, right now, I mean, it's uh, definitely doing well. you got to think about Seoul's meme coin cycle. Been phenomenal. And then you look at the meme coin cycle just now starting to come out with Avalanche. Most likely we'll see some movement there. Key here is going to be timing, I think, with a lot of these. Render going to pump after the NVIDIA conference. Remember, we got a render pump. Pretty crazy. Let me go back to the chart and see if I can get to it real quick. Uh, did I close one out? Yeah, I think I did. Oh, no, I didn't. Here we go. We'll go back over to the render chart. Remember, render kind of took a, a run this weekend. This was a nice green candle right here. When you look at that over, because remember, render had traded down to around 10 bucks again and then pop right up to 13 pretty much overnight. And again, I think a lot of that was what's happening with GDC. We'll see how this plays out. But still, Render, just a phenomenal chart continuing. Just like I said, another thing too, guys, if you're not aware, 
These indices that I use, these are the Luxalgo indices. That's who we use uh, here on the channel, so it's definitely one to check out. ADA is getting ready to pump. Let's take a look at where Cardano is right now. That's what everybody is telling us. ADA is getting ready to pump. Let's take a look. ADA dropping a little bit off there. If you were playing ADA versus Avalanche, that was a wrong move. Uh, ADA down. Let's see what the chart is here from its top. Coming down almost 15%. A little tough. George says, hey, what about Star Atlas? I still like that game project. It rides on Solana. It, this will be one of the winners out there. There's a handful of games that we're watching. We'll probably do a game wrap up. Actually, we have a game show, uh, Web3 gaming show that will be coming up here in the next few weeks. That's going to be uh, more of a repetitive show to, to give you guys a little more insights to some of the games and projects that are out there. AVAX is definitely doing great, no doubt about it. Um, and remember, AVAX is in the middle of GDC, the developers conference, at the same time that the NVIDIA conference is going on in San Jose, you've got over in the Bay, you've got the developers conference and Avalanche has one of the largest booths and they're like right across from Meta. So you know what these guys are doing. They're sucking up devs. And I think that's a big one too to watch. All right. Uh, if you guys like the lives, make sure and uh, give us some likes. Just smash it right now. It's uh, always a great way for us to understand if it works for you guys, and of course, if you're not in the Diamond Circle, get in right now. It's a great place to get additional content. Catch me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on Tech Bath.